Hi guys and congratulations on your subscription to the racing dossier. This is the newest and most up-to-date version and in this video we're going to go through some of the processes uh, that will get you up and running and analysing um, the day's racing lightning quick. So uh, once you log into the members area uh, you will be faced with this little button here which we can scroll down and click on races. This takes us to the main race page. Now today where I'm recording this video this is all of the meetings and you can see these are all the times of the races. Now if we hover over each race we can see the race ID which basically describes what the race is. In this case the seven o'clock at Epsom is the Federation of Bloodstock Agents Handicap uh, six furlongs, five runners. You'll also notice that there are little yellow asterisks next to some of the race times. These will basically mean that these races are the most valuable races uh, on the card. So if you prefer your more competitive racing, um, where the horses are, are obviously trying harder because the prize money is worth more than these are the races that, that you really want to focus on in your analysis. So <clears throat> we'll come back to this page, but the first thing we need to do is set up a race card for um, us to, to start analysing. So by to do this, we go to the racing dossier tab here, and that will bring up um, the kind of software's back office, if you like. So these are already pre-built race cards. Um, these can be used as soon as you as you want to start, and you'll see how you can use these once we get on uh, to a further stage in the video. But first, we want to add our own race card. So let's say, for example, we want to concentrate on flat turf, and we're looking for um, speedy horses, fast horses. So we'd only look at sort of five furlong races, six furlongs, maybe seven. On the left here, we have all of the ratings. If I scroll down, you can see the nearly a thousand in there. Um, for the purposes of this video, let's just say that we're going to add uh, four or five ratings. So by simply clicking on um, this plus sign here, which I always think is the pharmaceutical sign in Europe, uh, we can click um, here and this then is transferred to the selected ratings box. If we want to get rid of this, we simply click the minus button or what looks like a stop sign and uh, it will go back over to here. So let's select age, days since last good run. Then now initially don't be put off by these somewhat complicated looking ratings descriptions. If you hover over them, uh, they actually explain what these ratings mean. So if we scroll down, um, we can see here this is the projected speed race class. We take the median of the last three speed figures for each horse and then take the median of the medians from all the runners in the race. So let's pick that one as an example. Um, so we add that by clicking the plus sign. Um, <clears throat> if we scroll down, you'll also notice that we've got some new ratings in here. Um, we've got um, jockey and trainer's overall rating. We could use that. Uh, and number of days since horse had a good race at this distance. So let's add that. So quite a simple race card. We've got five ratings in there. So what we need to do before we save this is add a name for it. So I'm just going to put test one. Um, and let's say that we're going to focus on speed and trainer jockey performance, which comes from this rating here. We ignore the apply filters. I'm going to go through that shortly and we add this race card. So you'll see that it processes. And now you can see that this test one, this is the race card we've just built with the description is here. And we can go back at any time and edit the race card so we can add new ratings or take them away. We can completely delete it 
um, and we can also set this race card as default. So that's actually what I'm going to do now. So this means that when we open any race, uh, the race will automatically open up with test one as the race card. So now that we've built our race card, we need to go back to races and start looking at um, the niche we're going to focus on. So in this example, we want um, a sprint run race, which would apply to the speed rating that we, we applied in the race card. So this is one of the most valuable uh, races on this card. So we'll, we'll select the seven o'clock and it's a six furlong. So it fits nicely with, with what we're looking at from the race card that we built. So <clears throat> I'll cover the Reynolds ranking in a minute, but here we can see uh, we've got the age. Now by clicking on the top of the column here where these little gray arrows are, we can sort the columns into ascending or descending order. <clears throat> um, to be honest, I've picked age, I'm not sure of the relevance. I mean, if you were following trends, uh, for example, you might find that some of the bigger races, like the group races, are generally run, uh, won by only four to five year olds, for example. So you would select those um, and we'll come on to eliminations in a minute. But day since last run, so I mean, we're looking for a horse that, um, generally speaking, I like horses that have run within the last sort of three months, uh, anything over that, unless they've proven to run well off a long break, um, I tend to eliminate them. Now, to eliminate a horse, let's say, for example, we're not interested in, in any horse that um, hasn't been on the track within the last three months, we simply click the red cross here and you'll notice it disappears and it goes into the eliminated horses down here. Now, we can add that back if we wanted to by simply clicking the red X once again, but we'll remove uh, poly bias for now. So <clears throat> these horses now sort of become relevant in the criteria of the last three months. Now, this rating here was the projected speed race class. So again, we can sort this into ascending order. Now, as it happens, these horses is, is very competitive and they're all um, showing the same rating. So jockey trainer overall rating, um, we're, we're kind of looking at uh, the, the higher rating, the better here, just as an example. Um, so let's say we want to focus on this one, which is, which is standout. Uh, and then you've also got a um, number of days since the horse has had a good race at this distance, which is kind of irrelevant here. But like I said, you can always go back and remove any ratings you don't feel are relevant um, when, you, when you go back to the back office of the race card. So let's say Handy Talk <clears throat> is kind of a standout selection here, uh, simply by sorting these horses into, um, into order using the ratings at the top. Uh, what we can do now is if we decide that this is the horse we want, we can also double check its form. So gathering historical data by clicking on uh, that little button there, you can actually go through and see where the horse has finished, how many runners there were, what the going was, the class, uh, the distance, um, and also what the ratings were um, before you would have analysed that race, if that makes sense. So <clears throat> that's something else that you can kind of add uh, if you want to be more thorough or sort of double check and you're happy with how the ratings have been processed. So let's say that this is a horse we now want. Uh, we can add this to our selections. Let's say we want to back it, or you could say a place bet only, whatever your preference is. Some people like odds ranges, so <clears throat> some people don't like betting odds on, so as long as a horse is even many or above, uh, and not greater if we're backing it only as opposed to each way, you might say you won't go above five to one. Stake size, I mean, you could have a five pound bet, you could have a thousand pound bet. Let's say we're betting to 10 pounds, we can then add that selection. So that's kind of adding a race card and analyzing the race. <clears throat> um, if we then click on selections, so once we've done the day's racing, um, oh, ignore this Dorado, that's from a, a previous 
video but here you can see uh, handy talk we've selected there and as long as the odds are between two and six we're happy with that bet it's a 10 pound stake again we can delete this if we wish and you can also export the selections to save them onto your computer um, and choose from three various files so csv is basically your standard excel and you'd simply click export and this would save to your computer um, <clears throat> So that's kind of the general basis of it all. Now, the other feature that we've got is you can add filters. So a very good example of this is, uh, let's add a new filter. The race we've just analyzed at Epsom is flat turf. So if we select um, Epsom here, and the going is good to firm, and it's a handicap. Now, by doing this, <clears throat> first of all, we'll, we'll name the filter. So, um, let's say uh, today's conditions. Filter description um, is relevant to test one, the car that we want. Now, in here, you can then sort of narrow it down to, to, to class. So, say classes four to six. Uh, prize money, distance, age, etc. Um, we add this filter. Okay, and then if we go back to the back office of the racing dossier, go back to our test one and edit the card, you can see here apply filters. By clicking that and then updating the race card, this will now apply that filter. And when we go back to the races, and select the horse, we were, uh, the race we were analyzing, we will now see that filter has been applied and this will affect the ratings. As it happens in this case, it hasn't because there's nothing relevant there. Um, but I assure you that, that that's the case. Um, so as you can see, you can literally analyze a race in a matter of minutes. Um, and if you're focusing on a particular niche and you've got four or five races a day, this software will enable you to um, analyze the day's racing in less than 10 minutes. Uh, it's also extremely um, helpful in recording all the bets that you then place. And again, that's something you can then go back over. Um, and when you go back over your results, you can then look at various ratings and say, well, actually, that rating wasn't very relevant or doesn't seem to be working for me. And you can simply change that on the race card, etc. Uh, so I hope that helps in, in getting you set up with the new software. We hope you enjoy it. And as always, any questions, please let us know at support at the raceadvisor.co.uk.